this video we're going to look at our probability for our AS2 uh, mathematics. There's a bit of reading here on the experimental probability and relative frequency, probability space, possibility spaces or probability spaces and sample spaces. And then we're going to go on to our example. So just uh, to start off the classical definition of probability. So what we mean here, this means the probability of an event A happens is the number of ways you can get the event A divided by the number of total number of possible outcomes or the number of elements in your sample space. So it's very important that we understand all of that. So your probability of an event A happening, so if we say for example you roll a dice, the probability of you rolling a two, there's only one way to roll a two out of six, and that's it. The probability you roll an odd number, probability you roll an odd number, there's three odd numbers, and that's out of six, and then you must remember to cancel down to get one half, and that, and that is it. If the probability of event A is one, then the event is certain. If the probability of an event A is zero, then the event A is impossible. Next thing we've got is a complement of A. Now this is really, the complement of A is not A. So you've got the prob probability of A plus the probability of not A adds up to one, because those two, uh, two events cover everything. So being A or not being A, that covers all the possible outcomes. So A or not A adds up to one. So remember the sum of all the probability possible outcomes is equal to one. A nice easy example here, we just have to uh, fill in this table. So if we have, we look uh, here, uh, this one to get this one here, uh, we know the total is 40. So the boys plus the girls must add up to be 40. So that means the boys quite simply are gonna be equal to 10. And then to get this one here, we know 40 plus the 30 plus something adds up to give you 100. So a wee bit of working out, we can work out the missing total for chemistry is 30. And then to get this one, we know 20 plus something gives you uh, 30. So the missing thing is gonna be 10. And to get this one, 40 plus something gives you 100. So the missing number is going to be 60. Then we can work horizontally. We know the total for this row here is 60. So 30 plus 10 plus something gives you 60. So 30 plus 10 is 40. So the missing number must be 20. And to get this number in here, 10 plus the number plus 20 gives you 40. So the missing number must be, a wee tiny bit of working out, must be 10. So you've got all of your, uh, all of your numbers filled in in your two-way table. This example says two dice are thrown right out the sample space and find the probability of squaring more than eight and not square number. So what I'm going to do is my sample space. So to do this, horizontal line and vertical line, uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So my first dice and my second dice, the combined score would be uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on for the rest. So you can see I've filled in the rest of it. Now here, if we notice a couple of good things. Um, first of all, if you find it, if you want to find the sum of the two numbers, how many sum of the two numbers is five, you find one five and the rest of the fives are going to be in a diagonal. Likewise, you find one nine, the rest of the nines are going to be in a diagonal. Seven, you can see, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's on a long diagonal. So seven, that's why seven is the most common number to get if you roll two dice. So the sum of the two, not sum of the two dice is seven, and that's the most likely uh, total uh, to come out. What you've got to do in this question is find the probability uh, that x is greater than eight, and it is not a square number. So I'm just gonna circle the ones which that applies to them. So it's probably the easiest way once you've got your uh, sample space done. So greater than eight, you've got nine, 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 and nine. You've got 10, 10, 10, you've got 11, 11, and 12, but all of those nines are also square numbers. So it's just that 10, 10, and 10, 11, 11, and 12. So when we actually look at it, 
we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of 36 of our possible outcomes, which is just one out of six, and that's it. This example says three uh, fair spinners, each with the numbers one, two, and four are spun together, list the outcomes. So I'm gonna list uh, the first set of outcomes and then I'm gonna pause the video, we're gonna write down, uh, write down the rest of them as well. So first set of outcomes, you have to start somewhere. So I'm gonna start with uh, having a one every time on the first, so I could have a one, uh, I could have a one, and I could have a one, because if you have sp three spinners, they all have one on them. I could also have a one, a one and a two. I could also have a one, a one, and then a four. So you can see how I'm sort of systematically going through this. And maybe I'm gonna start with a one and then start with the next, I'm gonna have a two, and then I could have one, and then one, a two, and a, a two, and then I could have one, two, and four. And then I also could have one, and then start with a four and one, and one, four and two, and then one, four and four. So that's all the ways that I can get the ones. So I'm gonna do the same uh, for the twos, uh, starting with the twos and then starting with the fours. I'll just pause the video to do that first. Okay, I haven't quite finished yet. I've just done all the twos. I've got my two, one, one, two, one, two, two, one, four. So I've started with all the twos and then the middle number I started with the ones and then I did one, two, four. Next, I'm gonna start with the twos again, but then I'll have twos in the middle column, then I'll do one, two, four. And then the last way of doing this, I've got all the twos, then start with the fours, and I have one, one, two, and four. So you can see, it's a good way of doing it, a good logical way of doing it, so you're not gonna miss any. So now I'll just pause the video again and do all of the ones starting with four. And you can see I've done the same process to get all the fours, so you can see all of the possible outcomes they have been listed.